in today's show. We're looking ahead to Thursday in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Normally on the Wednesday, which is where we are today, Thursday for me here in Australia, I do a second waiver wire show, but I didn't think it was really necessary because we've got, you know, after today, there's four days left in the season. There's no long term ads, there's no stashing, there's none of that. It's about need. And there's no point me coming out. This is a droppable guy. That's it's all very much based on what you're doing on these individual days. Thursday, Friday, Saturday in particular, they're your low volume days. We've talked about already how to manipulate that schedule. We're going to talk about who to look for for Thursday today. We're going to talk about the Thursday-Friday back-to-back combination to get you in here. And then when you get to Sunday, it's just about what categories and what players are available. And so much stuff is going to change in the next four days. I thought it would be pretty pointless to do that show than do a streaming show as well. So we're just doing the streaming show. Again, focusing on Thursday, looking to the Thursday-Friday combination as well. So, warning. Let's get it on, Gilly. (laughs) Let's start with points leagues. Um, on Yahoo, these names are going to be pretty um, popular on this show. And it's two brothers. It's Tyus Jones and it's Trey Jones. Ja Morant is out in Memphis. So he's going to have... Um, Tyus Jones is going to have a lot of value there. We saw last game. They could at any point rest somebody because they are locked in to their seeding position. They play the Nuggets on Thursday. They could rest guys. I don't know. It's impossible for me to project, but there is a chance that they do that considering they can't move in the standings. So just watch that one. But otherwise, I do like Tyus. I like Trey as well because DeJounte Murray is out in San Antonio. He's still ill. And that means that we're going to get... um, We're going to get some decent value, hopefully, for Trey. Now, DeJounte could come back. Like, he's not officially out at this point, I don't believe. He could come back. But um, from everything Greg Popovich was stating... It doesn't seem likely that he will be ready to play. In fact, I'm just going to double check this because I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure now that I think about it, on the official injury report, Murray was listed as out. Um, and Tyus Jones has filled in really, really well in the absence of DeJounte most of the time. I think he's shown that maybe at some point he can become a starting point guard. Maybe. I just had a look. They haven't submitted their official injury report, but Pop did say it seems uh, improbable that uh, DeJounte is going to play. Chumura Kiki is an option as well because the Magic are ruling out a lot of guys. Wagner, Carter, and Anthony are all out. I don't think they play that final game on Sunday either. So you're going to get Akiki and Wagner stepping up into larger roles. Markel Fultz will probably start again, so he's going to be a strong option there too. So we can look at him as a good streamer. For the Nuggets, you've got Bones Highland, who's an option, although we have to deal with whatever it is Malone's doing. And you're yeah, moving those minutes around. He went 19, 27, 29, 27, 18 minutes. Like, that's really annoying. It's very hard to be able to rely upon that. Devin Vassell's a great ad, I think. Yeah, no Murray and his role is pretty secure. DeAnthony Melton, rest potential, sure. But I like him as an ad. Mason Plumley has some value, especially after they DNP'd Montrez Harrell last game. But that doesn't mean that Plumley goes through the roof. It just means there's a higher chance of better numbers. Keon Johnson, I think he's doing pretty well. I, no, let's try again. He's doing okay, um, and I think he can continue to do okay. That's more what I'm trying to get get out there. He is um, going to start and play pretty good minutes. And Otto Porter will return for the Warriors. Rested in the last game, he will be pretty solid, I would imagine. He does he does show some inconsistencies at times, but I think he's at least worth a stream. But there are better streams than Otto Porter. This, that's just if everyone else has gone. Like I really like the Joneses. I like Vassell. I like Fultz a lot. Um, I like Truma quite a bit as well. On the ESPN side of things, it's the Joneses again, Tyus and Trey, um, Chumura Kiki. Herb Jones is available in over 70% of leagues over on ESPN, so he absolutely 
has to be an option for you. And then it's a lot of those same names. In fact, every other name is exactly the same because they're all available in 70% or more of leagues on ESPN. Bones Highland, Devin Vassell, Markel Fultz, Otto Porter, De'Anthony Melton, Mason Plumley. These guys are all available in lots of spots and you can stream them in for Thursday and get some extra value out of them. Well, college basketball is over. That doesn't mean that there's not sports going on. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your sports betting needs and sports info. You find all the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championships odds, podcasts, and reviews for all of the different leagues this season. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And if we have a look over at BetOnline.net, we can have a look at some of the NBA games and some of their odds. Let's look today. The Suns are six-point underdogs against the Clippers. Now, the Suns are resting a bunch of guys. The Clippers, every spot is locked in for the play-in slash playoffs. Just the seeding isn't locked in. The Clippers, six-point favorites against a husk of a Suns team. I think the Clippers might might do that, might cover the, the minus six there. So you can check that out over at Bet Online. So head to that website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet Online is where the game starts. Let's go to category leagues. Who are we streaming in for each category? We'll start with the points category, as we always do. Keon Johnson. He's playing, yeah, again, the role, the usage, it's all there for him. He could shoot three of 12 and you know hurt a lot and give you eight points, but he could also have 15 or 16. I think Keon's a mighty decent stream who's available in so many spots. Tyus Jones, also a pretty good spot, as is Trey Jones, as streamers for the points category. Lonnie Walker's very much hit and miss. But if he's going to do anything, it's going to be score. He's not going to do anything else, but he's going to score if, he's, if he gets something going. Markel Fultz, you know, if you're looking for double-digit scoring, probably not 20-point upside, but you know, 14 to 15. Fultz is the guy. Malik Beasley, especially if Pat Beverly's out, which we don't know at this point. Beasley started the last game. He's going to get everything basically coming from deep, coming from three. But there's 14 to 15 points potential there for him, and that might be enough to swing things for you. This guy's available everywhere. Iggy Brazdakis in Orlando. Had 20 points last game. He's probably going to start with Wagner out. He's probably, I would suggest, going to be able to play 30 plus minutes. He's played 37 and 36 the last two games. And that is is good. Like That's obviously a lot of value that can come in from Brazdakis in, uh, and get some good scoring going. Trey Jones, we talked about. Joshy Richardson as well in San Antonio. Benny McLemore, he's getting a pretty green light to shoot in Portland. And then Jalen Suggs, who I'm much more iffy on. He played 18 minutes in his first game back. There is usage there with no Wagner, no Anthony, no Carter. There's opportunities for him to get some shots. Whether they go in or whether he plays enough remains to be seen. But it looks like he will play and have an opportunity to do that. For three-pointers, Malik Beasley and Ben McLemore, probably the two biggest options there. Easily, both of those guys have six triple upside. Grayson Allen and Joshy Richardson, solid roles, really valuable floor value, I think, in terms of you think they're going to hit at least two. Maybe they give you three, so that's useful enough. Um, George Niang is always going to be someone who takes threes. Whether they go in or not, I don't know. And then Peyton Pritchard, um, an interesting guy who could easily hit five threes in 18 minutes. The upside of Niang and Pritchard is limited because of their bench roles, but there is value in them. Lonnie Walker and Tyus Jones can help full for threes as well, as is my man Iggy Brazdakis, who again is going to get lots of opportunities to get some shots up. Paddy Connaughton, also a relatively reliable three-point shooter in that Richardson, Grayson Allen, Georgie Niang sort of a role. Rebounds. It's rough for the rebounds, to be fair. Like Dwight Howard, I don't expect Anthony Davis or LeBron James to play. I do like Davis is officially doubtful. Um, just, not officially. Davis is doubtful. I've got LeBron doubtful as well. We're waiting for the official injury report for Thursday. I, I don't expect these guys to play this season. They're both hurt and the Lakers are done. So that could open things up for Dwight, but it could also not. We've seen so many shenanigans with these lineups. Otto Porter's had some good double-digit rebound games. He's an option for us. Mo Wagner, the old flaming Mo. He's someone who can come in with Wendell Carter out and put up some numbers. Daniel Tice and Larry Nance, wouldn't say their upside is huge, but 25 minutes or so, seven to eight rebounds, it's just enough to tick that category over. Greggy Brown is starting. He's not blowing us away, but eight or nine rebounds is a possibility there. 
Kevon Looney, who amazingly is still only 25. I don't know how that's possible. Precious Achua, the big sneeze. Well, if the Raptors are going to rest a bunch of guys, as they claim that they are now after saying the other day they weren't, uh, who knows how to keep track of that. But apparently they're going to rest guys. So look for Trent and Van Vliet and Ananobi to be sitting games here. Um, Achua is going to get an increased role. Same goes with Chris Boucher, of course. So look at Achua there. Reggie Perry as a backup big man in Portland. Sometimes he can be okay. And Zach Collins, if Jock Landale's out especially, Collins can put up some numbers. For assists, we're going Joneses again. Trey and Tyus, they're probably two of the best options you can actually add for Thursday. Mark Fultz, also an excellent assist streamer. It's not as empty an assist for Thursday that with those three options in particular. Chris Dunn's a seven or eight assist upside player. Jalen Suggs might be five or so. And then it gets a little bit rough. Although, RJ Hampton had seven last game. Jordan McLaughlin's had a 10 assist game this season. Andre Iguodala's maybe three. Keon Johnson, I think, had six or seven last game. And Bielitsa had five or six last game. So, yeah, Bielitsa and Iguodala and McLaughlin and even Hampton, they're a little bit more um, dice roll sort of guys. But the Joneses, Fultz, Dunn, even Keon Johnson, I feel a bit more secure in those guys providing some solid enough um, assist numbers. Let's go to the steals category. The Dr. Gary Payton's number one and Chris Dunn's number two. We know that bushels of steals will come their way most likely, so they're good options. Tyus Jones is a good steals guy. Otto Porter's had a couple of four or five steal games this season, and I think his role will be pretty solid. Markel Fultz, and then also his teammate, Devin Kennedy. Didn't think I'd ever be recommending that we add Iggy Brazdakis or Devin Kennedy, but here we are. Kennedy's played some decent minutes the last couple of games, and with Anthony out, he's going to get playing time again. Jordan McLaughlin and Trey Jones, some good steals options there. We've talked about Trey ad nauseum. Cody Martin, he doesn't really do anything else, but two steals is not outrageous for him. And then Keon Johnson, who again is a guy that's available widely and can be rostered in, in a lot of different spots. For blocks, this is where it's pretty empty. Like Naz Reed, maybe. Brandon Clark, like sure. Just watch to see whether they rest people there in uh, Memphis. Daniel Tyson, Grant Williams, maybe they block one shot between them, picking the right one. Uh, it's really tough. I don't know how you do it. Greggy Brown's probably got the highest upside here because he's starting. He's a three to four block upside player, I think. It hasn't really happened for him of late, but the upside's there. Zach Collins, Dwight Howard, Luke Cornett, Robin Lopez, and DeAndre Jordan. Like, it is not a good list of those guys. Not, not at all. Maybe Zach's a two or three block guy, but the other players... It's just like throw a dart with a blindfold on and, and hope something good comes out of it. You, you are really scraping the bottom of the barrel to get some big block numbers out of some of these guys. Field goal percentage, Brandon Clark and Robin Lopez right at the top there. Gary Payton as the guard. Well, you don't really get many guards on this list. Dwighty Howard, DeAndre Jordan, Kevon Looney. Not good. Larry Nance, Daniel Tice, Trey Jones, and Mo Wagner as some other field goal percentage players. I probably like Tice as one of the stronger ones there, as well as Clark and Payton, because I just feel a little bit more confident about their roles on their teams. For free throw percentage, it's probably a little bit nicer to grab some guys here. We've got Joshy Richardson, who's a really good free throw shooter, Jermichael Green and Grant Williams, George Hill, DJ Augustin. Like, they're all great free throw shooters. You just got to hope they actually get to the line to get you a couple of free throws there. I like Mo Wagner because I think he will get to the line and he can influence that category positively. Bryn Forbes, well, who knows? Malone, oh, I'm going to get him more minutes, guys. Got to get him more minutes. Doesn't play him at all in the second half. So that was sick. Um, Trey Murphy, also a good free throw shooter. Hopefully they give him a little bit more playing time. Grayson Allen, we know he's going to get his 24 minutes. And Ben McLemore is going to get his high 20s minutes. The problem is that he never gets to the line, but he's a good shooter when he gets there. There are five teams that play the Thursday, Friday back-to-back. The Raptors, the Hornets, the Lakers, the Bucks, and the Blazers. So who can we look at to stream in? I'd say we look at Chris Dunn, Greg Brown, Keon Johnson, CJ Allaby, Reggie Perry. They're all Portland guys we can look at. Grayson Allen, Paddy Connaughton in Milwaukee. Dwight Howard and who knows with the Lakers. If Malik Monk's there, you grab him. But could it be Austin Reeves or Avery Bradley or Stan Johnson? What are they going to do with LeBron and Davis? The rotation's all over the shop. It's very hard to pin someone down this early for the Lakers. Thad Young in Toronto, of course, Achua and Boucher could be really strong as well if they do rest these guys, as we do expect. And Cody Martin in Charlotte, maybe you take a look at a Cali Oubre there as well, although I wouldn't feel particularly good about that one in terms of streaming those guys in. Um, now we should just have a look quickly at where the injury news sits for Thursday. There are seven games on. Um, the guys that we know that are out, Wagner, Cole Anthony, Wendell Carter, 
I expect that Gordon Haywood returns for Charlotte, but I don't know that for sure. The, the only team with a Wednesday, Thursday back-to-back is the Celtics. So there is a risk of Horford, Tatum, Brown um, all sitting out. Be aware of that. They are all listed probable for Wednesday's game. So they're expected to play, but there is a chance they sit Thursday. Just be, be aware of that. That could elevate Derek White, Peyton Pritchard, Grant Williams, Daniel Tice, those sort of players. The Raptors, um, Ananobi and Van Vliet and Trent, I would have to expect are at risk of sitting one off Thursday or Friday. For Portland, I don't expect Watford or Hart or Winslow to play. Brandon Williams is the one to watch. And Valanciunas to watch in New Orleans as well. He missed last game. A questionable tag. Pat Beverly in Minnesota is questionable. Um, that's one to watch there. Ja Morant will be out for Memphis. Jamal Murray, Michael Porter, of course. Dylan Brooks, I expect to return after he rested last game. But they could do a bunch of stuff. And then, of course, with the Lakers, with LeBron and Davis, we just don't know what their status will be. While Clay, Iguodala, and Otto Porter will all return for the old um, uh, for the Warriors. I'm just looking to see if there's more injury news coming out now. It looks like there is some of it coming out. Uh, yeah, and uh, Gordon Haywood is doubtful. There you go. That's been updated. OJ Ananobi is questionable. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Matisse Thibel is not playing because he's uh, ineligible to play. So he just, he's not vaccinated. We know that. They're going to Toronto. So he won't be able to play. So some things opening up there for... Um, uh, in Philadelphia for maybe some Danny Green minutes. What else is going on? What other news things happening just a- as this all uh, occurs at the moment? Oh, by the way, guys, the incantation. We've got to say goodbye. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Yep, the Thunder waved Olivier Saar to sign Melvin Fraser. Terrible move, ridiculous move, but it is what it is. And on that note, I will let you guys get go. I'll let myself go as well. Guys, don't forget, follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you are here on YouTube, thumb it up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.